State. Would you st please state your name for the record, please? Kimberly Van Wass. And how do you spell your last name? V-A-N space W-A-U-S. And where are you employed? I am employed at the Lee County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been employed with the Lee County Sheriff's Office? Since September 2001. And in what capacity have you been employed with the Sheriff's Office? I have been a records assistant, a evidence custodian, and I am currently a crime scene technician. And as a crime scene technician, did you have any training that you had to go through? Yes, I did. And briefly, what type of training have you had uh, to be a crime scene technician? I have an associate's degree in crime scene technology from Edison College. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal forensics from Florida Gulf Coast University. I am also a certified crime scene analyst through the International Association for Identification, and I have over 800 hours of specialized training in forensics. What does it take to be a certified crime scene analyst? You Just have to, oh, sorry, <laughs> you have to take an exam. So there's two major textbooks you have to study from, you have to have years of experience, and you actually have to take this exam to show that you are proficient in crime scene in order to pass the test. Now, did you receive a call to respond to a crime scene at 27Z34 Jarvis Road in uh, June, on June 29th of 2015? Yes, I did. And were you a crime scene technician at that time? Yes, I was. And uh, did you respond? Yes, I did. And when you're called out to a crime scene, do you have a method of processing a crime scene? Yes. And what's your method of processing a crime scene? We are responsible to document the crime scene, assess it for evidence and anything of interest. We have to collect the evidence and we also have to process the crime scene. And when you say document a crime scene, what are you talking about when you talk about documenting a crime scene? This can be done in a, a, a lot of ways. Uh, mostly photographs. We do a, a rough sketch we can, which can later be computerized. We do rough notes, we do a Faro 3D scanner, and we also take video. And you talked about a second thing being assessment. When do you begin your assessment of a crime scene? Is that after documentation? It's actually during documentation because while I'm photographing that scene, I'm also assessing. And collection and processing, does that come after the documentation and assessment? Yes, it does. When do you, um, well, let me just, for the crime scene that you mentioned at Jarvis Road, did you follow this same procedure or method when you were uh, at that crime scene? Yes, I did. When you were processing it. When you arrived at Jarvis Road, where did you first go? What did you first do? The first thing I did was I met with the detective on scene for a briefing and walked through the scene. And what type of information is provided to you in a briefing? This is anything that I might need to know before I start going through the crime scene and documenting. In this case, there was a, a little bit of information I need to know that I got from the Emmy briefing. And what information was provided you during the briefing that you used before you began or that you considered as you determined where to start your assessment, your documentation and assessment? The detective informed me about different doors that were locked or unlocked or forcefully opened during the clearing of the residence. And with that information in mind, how did you actually approach this crime scene? I actually approached this crime scene through the garage. Now, is the garage the first way you went, you uh, started, where you started with the crime scene, or do you do something, do you do an outward assessment, an outside assessment before you enter into a residence? I always start from the exterior of a residence. I will walk around the exterior photographing, and then I work my way into the residence. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And where did you start your walk through around, around the residence? On the exterior or interior? On the exterior. On the exterior, I started in the front of the house. And how did you proceed after starting on the front of the house? I walked around the entire perimeter of the residence, and then I went to the garage. Was there a gate around or a fence around the back of the perimeter of the yard of the residence? Yes, there was. And did you go, did you enter into that gate when you were doing your outside perimeter? 
Yes, I did. And did you go to look at anything in particular as you were walking around the house doing this outside exterior perimeter initial uh, walk? Yes, I did. What did you do? I was, during my briefing, I was informed about a side garage door. So this was of interest to me. It was damaged. So I began my assessment in that area after walking through there's two gates of the fence and I walked through one of the gates and then I went to that door and did you observe that door yes I did um, did you observe it from both the outside and the inside how did you go about uh, documenting that door I began documenting it from the exterior because that's where I start my photographs and then I opened the door photographed the door and the locking mechanism and then I went inside and I photographed it from the inside of the garage as well now did you continue at that point your documentation and we'll call it assessment going through that side garage door or did you then come back to the front of the garage I believe in this situation I did continue on through the side of the garage I had the interior of the garage also from in the driveway but I went through the residence through the side door side, through the side door and as you went through the uh, garage did you continue to photograph yes I did and what what type of photographs were you taking and I don't mean the nature of the film or the camera but when you are documenting what are you taking photographs of the first set of photographs I take are our initial photographs. This is everything in this residence as is how I walked in the door. So I'm trying to show the condition of the house the way I see it when I arrive on scene. So this is every wall, ceilings, doors, drawers, cabinets, everything is photographed in this first set of photographs. So after you had walked uh, into the garage, you documented in the garage, where did you go next? I walked into the laundry room, which is right next to the garage. And did you continue to document when you walked into the laundry room? Yes, I did. And did you follow that same type of procedure you've been describing of photographing everything? Yes, I did. After going into the laundry room, where did you next go? I, the next room over would be the kitchen. And when you walked into the kitchen, did you continue your documentation? Yes, I did. Did you find anything in the kitchen that gave you an appreciation for where the uh, focus of the crime scene would be? Yes, I did. And what did you find? I found the victim, Dr. Teresa Sievers, lying on the floor. And if you could just describe for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how you began to do the documentation in the kitchen. So as I'm photographing overall of the kitchen, I'm also starting to note things. This is my assessment stage. There's items that are more prominent and that I need to photograph, the victim being one of those. And I'm taking more photographs to show the condition of the entire kitchen. Did there come a time when you stopped taking photographs in the kitchen and you continued your walk through the house? Yes. Uh, where did you next go in the house? The rooms adjacent to the kitchen were the the living room, a dining room, which wasn't really used as a dining room. So that would be the next room that I would photograph. And did you do so? Yes, I did. Did you photograph every room in this in this house? Yes, I did. And after photographing the two areas on either side of the kitchen, where did you go next in, in terms of your walkthrough of the house and your initial documentation? There, I would say that there was two wings of the house with bedrooms. So the one wing of the house had two bedrooms with a bathroom separated, and then there was a guest suite, I guess you could say. It was a bedroom with a, a bathroom nearby. And then on the other side of the house, I also went to the, there's more rooms on that side, but I'll stop there. <laughs> and what, what rooms were on the other side of the house? There was a, I called it a sitting room, but it was also utilized as an office. There was a desk in it with a couch. There was a dining room, the foyer to the front door, and the master bedroom with closets in the bathroom. Was there also an area that was an, what one might call an office that was on the other side of that house? Yes, that was actually near the, the dining room on the other side of the foyer. And did you be begin an initial documentation of the office area of the residence? Yes, I did. And did you also do an initial documentation of the master bedroom? Yes, I did.
when you're doing an initial documentation, do you go into every room or closet that's in a room when you're doing that initial documentation? Yes, I do. So in a master bedroom, would you look into the closets, for instance? Absolutely. And um, after doing a documentation of the master bedroom, where did you then proceed? Well, after the bedroom, it would be all the rooms within the master bedroom. There's the exterior pool area. There's actually a pool under a cage. I would have photographed that area. And I think that's all the rooms. Well, you mentioned that there was a, um, a room that was maybe, I don't know if you called it a guest room, but a room where there was a bedroom with a, a, a bathroom with it. Did you document that as well? Yes, I did. I called it the guest suite, I think. The guest suite. And did you document that as well? Yes. So as you went through this house, it sounds like you took photographs continually. Yes, I did. I want to show you both what has been admitted into evidence, and Your Honor, all of these have been shown to defense counsel. Yes, ma'am. I want to show you what's been admitted into evidence as 3A and what is marked for uh, identification as 3B. What are those? These are photographs I took. And what are they photographs of? This is the residence at 27034 Jarvis Road. And 3A, what, does, what do we see in 3A? This is the front of the residence. And what do we see in 3B? This is the backyard of the residence. Your Honor, if I might uh, move to introduce State's Exhibit 3B. No objection. We'll show it admitted. I might publish. You may. Introducing the evidence is 3A, and this is? This is the front of the residence. There's actually a little bit more of the residence on the right that's not shown in the photograph, but this is a majority of the front of the residence. And in this photograph, I'm going to hand you a laser pointer. It works by a little button. Okay. Let's see if you can see this. In this photograph, can you show us, you talked about uh, a fence around the house. Can you show us where that fence is in this house? The, in this sorry. The left side of the house, you can see this is the white vinyl, I would say, privacy fence of the residence. About how tall is that fence? I would say it's about six feet. Now, we also talked about the garage. I think it's pretty obvious. Where is the garage in this photo? On the right side of the photograph, this is the double car garage where the door is open. Thank you. Let me uh, put what has been introduced into evidence as State's Exhibit 3B. Could you just describe to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what we see in 3B? So this is a photograph of the rear side of the residence. I'm from the front of the residence, it would be the back right corner looking at the house. That's where I'm standing. And then I'm photographing along the back side of the residence. And does the, it appears, does the fence go all the way around the uh, backyard? Yes, it does. Are there any gates in that fence? There are. The and if so, where? There are two gates. There are, is one on the left side at the front and one on the right side at the front. So are there any gates that are on the back of the fence? I didn't note any gates on the back. These are photographs I took. And where were those photographs taken? At the residence at 27034 Jarvis Road. And where at the residence? This is taken from the backyard of the residence. Actually, I would call it the side yard. On the back side of the fence, I'm standing. And these are photographs of the south garage door. A little bit ago, you talked about the garage door that 
uh, you initially started documenting before you walked inside the garage. Is this that garage door? Yes, it is. Moved to introduce state's exhibits 5 A, B, C, and D. Is there any? 5 A, B, C, and D. We'll show them admitted. Your Honor, permission to publish. You may. I'm showing you what has been introduced into evidence as Exhibit 5D. What is Exhibit 5D? That is the south garage door from the exterior side where I'm standing is just behind the white vinyl fence on the right side of the residence. And using the laser pointer, can we see in this photograph the fence that you've been talking about? The white vinyl fence? Yes. And where is it? You can see it slightly on the left side of the photograph. This is where it connects to the wall. There's a small portion right here. I'm going to show you what's been introduced into evidence as State's Exhibit 5B. Yes, ma'am. Looking at State's Exhibit 5B, what do we see in State's Exhibit 5B? This is the exterior edge of that south garage door, and it shows the both sides of the lock and handles. And what do we see in 5B? You can see a lot of damage to the, the door. Let me just put on uh, State's Exhibit 5C, and if you can just again describe what we're looking at in 5 This is another photograph I took of that same south garage door. It's, you can see more of the exterior side and that door handle. And I'm photographing the damage and there's also a scale in the photograph. And finally, let me show you State's Exhibit 5A. What do we see in that photograph? This is the interior side of that same south garage door, and again, you can see the lock and the door handle, and the lock on the door handle. Did you find anything significant about that lock and door handle when you were looking at the door and taking these photographs? Yes, I did. What did you find that was significant? The door, both locks were unlocked. Now you talked about how you, after you had looked at taking your documentation of that side door, you entered the garage, is that correct? Yes, it is. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as State's Exhibits 4, A through E. I ask that you take a moment to look through them. States uh, exhibits 4A through E. These are photographs, again, I took at the residence. And where were those photographs taken? In what part of the residence were they taken? I took these photographs in the garage. Uh, move to admit States 4A through E. Any objection? We'll show them admitted. Permission to publish. 
Sean. You may. I'm going to show you what's been introduced into evidence as State's Exhibit 4B. Can you tell us? Can you tell us what we see in State's Exhibit 4B? This is a photograph of the south side of the garage. This is, yeah. We see an open door in that garage. Where is that door in relation to what you've been talking about? That is the door that I'm talking about. That's the, the doorway to the south garage door. And what we are seeing in the garage, blue bins, material on the ground, was that all there when you arrived? Yes, everything except for the ladder. Except for the ladder? And what was the ladder there for? That was to be utilized to help us search. State's Exhibit 4A. What do we see in State's Exhibit 4A? This is also the south side of the garage. This is just the other wall. You can see the same white cars parked on that side of the garage. And the door on the right side of the photograph is now closed. That's that same south garage door. Could you take the laser pointer and just point out where that outside door that's now closed is? It's on the right side of the photograph. Could you also, to give us perspective, point out where the door to enter into the residence from the garage is? It's off the photograph, but it's going to be <laughs> over in this direction. This is another photograph of the south side of the garage. You can again see the white car. The door on the top right corner of the photograph is the south garage door. I am actually standing near the doorway to go into the residence. That's the perspective of where I'm standing. And there appears to be, while small, some type of a pathway from where you're taking the photo to that door. Did you create that pathway or was that pathway there when you began your documentation? The pathway was already there. I want to show you uh, State's Exhibit 4C. Could you describe for the members of the jury what we see in State's Exhibit 4C? This is a photograph on the north side of the garage, so it's opposite of that door. And there is a piece of purple luggage on the floor with its contents actually on the ground next to the piece of luggage. And on the right side of the photograph is the door into the residence. And would you again with your laser pointer point to us where the door is that you use to enter into the residence? It's on the right side of the photograph. This is the bottom portion of the door right here. what has been introduced into evidence as 4D. What are we looking at in State Exhibit 4D? This is a close-up photograph of the piece of purple luggage that was on the floor with its contents on the right side of the luggage laying on the ground. And during your initial documentation and assessment, did you go through this particular suitcase? I did at a later time, but this is how I found it. But that's what I mean. Right now, all you're doing is photographing and assessing. Is that correct? Correct. Now, as you moved from the garage, where did what was the next room into which you entered? I entered into the laundry room. I want to show you what's been marked for identification as state's exhibits 6A through C. What are 6A through C? These are photographs I took. And what are they photographs of? These are photographs I took in the laundry room of the residence. Now, is the laundry room what you walk into immediately from the garage? Yes. 
Move to admit state 6A through C. Okay. We'll show them admitted. You may. Members of the jury, what we see in States Exhibit 6A. This is the washer and dryer inside the laundry room. When you and there's also a laundry basket along the side of it. The I'm actually standing in the doorway, going from the garage into the laundry room, and I'm photographing to the left. So walking in to the left. And States Exhibit 6B. What do we see in States Exhibit 6B? This is the pathway of the laundry room because the laundry room is a cut through into the kitchen. This is me standing in the garage through the door showing the entire center path of the laundry room. Now in the picture on the bottom right hand corner of it we see some kind of a white object. What is that? If it's what I think, the freezer. There was a deep freezer along the wall in the garage. And if you could just use your laser pointer to indicate for the members of the jury where that is. On the bottom right corner, right here, is the top left corner of that deep freezer. And finally, I want to show you uh, States Exhibit 6C. What, what is this? This is an alarm panel on the wall in the laundry room. And where was that alarm panel? On which wall in the laundry room? When you walk into the laundry room from the garage, it is directly inside on the left wall. So it's on this, it's on the left side of the door walking into the laundry room. So if I were to put State Exhibit 6D back before you, could you with your laser pointer show which wall that the alarm panel would have been on? It's on the opposite side of this wall right here on the left side of the photograph. I think you indicated after going uh, from, the from the garage to the laundry room, you next went to the kitchen. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I want to show you what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit 7A through F. If you could take a moment to look at those. These are photographs I took of the kitchen in the residence. Move to uh, admit these evidence states A7A throughout. We'll show them admitted. Permission to publish. You may proceed. seeing in 7A. This is a photograph of the kitchen floor and on the floor you see the victim, Dr. Teresa Sievers. And do you see other items that were also on the floor? Yes, there are multiple items scattered on the floor around her body. I want to show you what Yes, ma'am. I'll show you what's been introduced into evidence at State Exhibit 7B. What is that? 
This is a red and black handled hammer that is found on the kitchen floor and it also has a number one. This is utilized when I mark evidence. It is at marker number one. Now when you initially went through the kitchen, did you initially put a marker beside it or did you come back and put a marker afterward? I do my initial photographs first and then when I'm in my assessment slash collection phase, I'm marking evidence with yellow markers to do an additional set of photographs with. I'll show you what's been introduced into evidence as States Exhibit 7C. What is this? This is a multicolored wallet that was found on the kitchen floor. I marked it number three and it had cards and identification cards for Teresa Sievers inside. And could, could we see that wallet in States Exhibit 7A that we looked at that initial photo? Yes, it was on the floor. Showing you States Exhibit 7D. What is 7D? I forgot to note something on the last photograph. Seven C. Sorry. There's also some receipts on the floor that are also around that wallet that were of interest, so I just want to point those out. States Exhibit 7D. This is a photograph inside the pantry that was located inside the kitchen. I'm standing in the kitchen photographing into the pantry. Was there room for an individual to stand? Was there enough space? We see the, we see the floor of the pantry. Was there enough space for an individual to stand inside that closet? Yes, there was plenty of room. Been marked as State's Exhibit Number Seven E. What is State's Exhibit Number Seven E? This is a photograph of the left or north side of the kitchen. I'm standing in the center of the kitchen photographing that direction and showing the cabinets, the refrigerator, and what's on the other side of the kitchen in that direction. So if we were to walk in the front door of this house, would can you point out with the laser pointer where we would be entering the home? If you walk through this path and turn left before these doors right here, if you turn left, that's the foyer which would put you at the front door. And in this photo, can we see the office that you refer to? Yes, this opening in the top center portion of the photograph, you can see that it's the doors are open. This is actually the office. And you also spoke at one point of the master bedroom. What direct from this photo do we head can we head to the master bedroom in a particular direction? Yes. And if you sorry. No. And where would that be? If you continue through this pathway to the if you went to the right slightly, there's another little hallway that enters into the master bedroom. And I want to show you what's been marked as introduced as evidence of State's Exhibit 7. Yeah. What are we looking at in State's Exhibit 7 now? This is the east, or I can't really say left or right, so the east side of the kitchen. This is showing the relationship of the living room to the kitchen, which was next to the kitchen. And again, if we were standing here, can you at least indicate the direction where the garage door would be on this picture? Directly behind me. Now in the last picture we looked at, you talked about the living room, correct? Correct. I want to show you what's been marked as states exhibits number seven A, uh, excuse me, seven, eight A, D, and C for identification. What can you tell us what seven, eight A, D, 
These are photographs I took, two of the living room area and one of the dining room area that was not utilized as a dining room. Move to introduce Jake's exhibit 8 We'll show them admitted. Permission you may proceed. I'm going to show you uh, state exhibit 8A. What are we looking at in state exhibit 8A? This is the entertainment center in the living room. And as we're standing in the, did we see this in the photo as we were standing in the kitchen? Yes, you did. And what do what is in front of that that's out of the photo that we cannot see? There's a sectional sofa. I want to show you in, in evidence at 7B. Can you tell me what this is a photo of? This is a photograph of the coffee table that's in the center section of around the sectional that's in the lawn or the living room. I'm sorry, I meant 8B. Thank you, Mr. Bazal. 8B. And you said if you would sorry. repeat yourself, please. No. It's a coffee table that was in front of the sectional sofa in the living room. And finally, 8C. What are we looking at in 8C? These are items that were, I, I keep calling it a dining room, but I guess it would be a nook because um, there is a formal dining room somewhere else in the house. So this is that nook section that's always near a kitchen. Um, they didn't have a table there or anything. They were just boxes and a piano up against the window. identify where on 7F that area you're talking about that we see 8C, a little nook. Uh, you can see laser pointer. Yeah. Thank you. You can't really see, but on the left side of the picture is the w a little piece of the window. This is the right side of that nook area. So if you would keep going, panning to the left of this photograph, that area of the nook is right there. Show you what's been marked for
9A through E. These are photographs I took of the sitting room, the foyer, and the dining room of the residence. Move to admit states 9A through E. No objection except to 9C. Okay, you can approach. We'll show the others admitted except for C at this point.
9A through E admitted. Objections noted for the record. I'm showing you what's uh, been admitted to evidence in States 9A. What are we looking at in States 9A? This is a photograph of the sitting room, which was also utilized as a desk or office area. And is that a closed room or an open room? Does that question make sense? Yes, it's an open room. There's no doors to it. And let me show you State's Exhibit 9B. What is 9B? This is a close-up photograph of the laptop sitting on the desk in that sitting room. And State's Exhibit 9C, what is State's Exhibit 9C? Or what area of the room is State's Exhibit 9C? This is also the sitting room. Can we see the computer on, can we see the computer that was on the desk in 9C? Yes, you can. And could you, with your laser pointer, point out where it would be? It's on the right side of this photograph. This is the left side of that same laptop. States Exhibit 9D. What do we see in States Exhibit 9D? You actually see a couple different rooms in this photograph. I'm standing in the sitting room, and you can see on the left side of the photograph are the front doors. So that's the foyer. You can see the open doors to the office. To the right of those open doors is the slight small ha hallway that goes into the master suite. To the right of that is the dining room. And as um, are, you're standing inside that little, uh, what did you call it? That little. It's a sitting room. I called it a sitting room. room. You're standing inside the, the sitting room looking towards what remains in the house, that portion of the house? Correct. As you're standing here, where would we go to get to the kitchen? Can I use my laser pointer? Please. On the right side of the photograph, there's an opening. If you turned right, that would put you into the kitchen area. Let me show you what is 9E. Can you tell us what we're looking at in State's Exhibit 9E? This is one of the walls in that formal dining room. Uh, you can see the dining room table, and on the right side of the photograph are the sliding glass doors that go onto the lanai. And looking back again to 9D, do we see that same piece of furniture in 9D? Yes, you do. And where is it? If I circle it with the laser. It's this same piece that's in that photograph. I believe it's a hutch. or a, the, the sliding glass doors to which you referred? The sliding glass doors are to the right of it. I want to show you what's been marked for identification purposes as states 10A through 10Q. Can you take a moment and then... A through Q, yes.
is State's Exhibit 10A through Q. These are photographs I took inside the office. Um, Move to introduce uh, State's 10A through Q. No we'll show them admitted. Permission to publish. You may. This is the entry into that office. I'm standing outside the office showing the double doors going in. And where is the front door of the house in relation to these double doors? If you could use the laser pointer and identify that for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The left side of this photograph, you can see the very edge of the front door. So they would be to the left of this photograph. Now, were these doors open when crime scene initially arrived? They were, but they were not earlier. So did someone from law enforcement open these doors before law enforcement, before crime scene arrived? Yes. I want to show you State's Exhibit 10B. What do we see in 10B? <laughs> This is a photograph standing in the doorway of that office. There is a closet to the right and a desk to the left and a lot of stuff on the floor. When you say you're standing in the doorway, showing you again States 10A, is that the doorway to which you're referring? Yes, it is. And when you say standing in the doorway, about where were you standing? I was standing in the threshold of that office. Can you just use your oh, sorry. About the bottom section of the photograph. Showing you states 10 C, what are we looking at? <laughs> there was multiple desks in this office. So there's an L-shaped desk, which you can see in the top left section of the photograph. There's also another desk in the bottom right part of the photograph. And then there's a computer chair in the center. This is a photograph of what's on top of the, not the L-shaped desk, but of the single desk. Right when you walk in the door, there's a, a regular desk right when you walk in. This is items on top of that desk. I'm pretty sure you can see. What are we seeing in 10E, and what's the perspective from the, that door that you walked in? So I'm standing, if not in the doorway, or just slightly inside the doorway of the office, and I'm photographing that back L-shaped desk that's on the back wall near the window, and you can still see a little bit of the desk on the bottom of the photograph, which is that single desk right when you walk in the door. If we were to lift those blinds, would we be looking into the front yard, the side yard, or the back yard? The front yard. So walking into the office, if you look to the <coughs> left, there were little drawers, organizer drawers, and other items up against the wall, and then a five-gallon jug with coins and currency inside. Stacy said the 5G, is that the five-gallon jug to which you just referred? Yes, it is. Was that jug hidden in the room? No. State's Exhibit 5H. What do we see in 5H? Should I say 5? What do we see in 10H? What do we see in 10H? This photograph, I'm actually standing in the center of the desks. So I have the single desk in front of me and the L desk would be behind me and at the top section of the photograph you can see the doors entering into the office so I'm standing in the center of the, of the room. And if you could with the laser pointer identify where those doors to the office from which you entered are. The one door is actually closed and the other door is open. Here's the opening of the office. Is that the dining room table we see through the door? Yes it is. Show you This 
is one of the drawers of the single desk. When I opened it, I noted money and coins, so I was photographing inside the drawers. And Ken J. This is a camcorder that was found while searching through the office. This was found in the closet of that office. The bottom section of this photograph is actually that closet that I stated is inside this office. And above it is a framed something with a whole bunch of bills in it. When you say bills, what do you mean? I believe they're oh, currency, sorry. Currency? Yes. So U.S. money? Yes. Now, was there a shredder in this office? Yes, there was. And I want to show you State's Exhibit 10L. Looking at in 10L. That is a document that was found in the shredder of the office. You know, I see blue gloves in this. Do you wear a particular protective gear when you are processing a crime scene? Absolutely. And what's the purpose in wearing that? We don't want to leave our own fingerprints and DNA behind, so especially in homicide cases, we wear gloves and booties inside crime scenes, which when I refer to booties, they're Tyvek shoe covers so that we're not stepping through evidence and tracking in through our, with our boots. We have coverings for those, and we will not be inside a house without gloves on. And did you put on booties and gloves before you entered into this residence? Yes, at all times. Did you put them on before you entered into the garage area of the residence? The station for the gloves and booties were set up right outside the garage so that you couldn't even enter the garage without having booties and gloves on. Now, if you went outside and started walking around to do something else and came back in, what would be the procedure? Taking off of those gloves and booties and putting a new set on. This is a close-up photograph showing what the document was that was found in the shredder of the office. And 10 in, what is 10 in? This is a close-up photograph showing the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, which would have been the return address on this document. Now, it looks like it's shredded. Was it all together when you found it? Yeah, this was actually stuck in the, the sharp edges of the shredder, so it was all still together. So we removed it together and collected it. It's hard to see, but this is the floor of the office, and I was documenting what was underneath the desks. So was it, what we see in 10 uh, O is that underneath one of the desks? This is actually underneath the L-shaped desk, which was underneath the window of the office. This is a close-up photograph of something I noted in the office. It's a holster and live ammunition. Now, take you to the 10Q. You talked about uh, in state 10 something under the desk. Take you to the 10Q. Can we see, what is taking to the 10Q? This is a, a pretty well overall photograph of that L-shaped desk under the window of the office. And can we see what you refer to in State Exhibit 10-0 uh, in this photo? Yes, you can. And where is that? If you could use the pointer. It's in the very center of the photograph. The office certainly appears very cluttered. Did uh, LCSO create that clutter, or was it there when you when they arrived? That was how I found the office. And in your briefing, was there any indication that anyone had in any way disturbed the crime scene, other than the few comments they made to you about doors? Just the doors. No, they didn't do anything else.
Let me show you what's been marked for identification as 11A through C. These are photographs I took of the master bedroom and the two closets. Uh, move to introduce 11A through C. We'll show them admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, permission to publish. You may. Let me show you what is State Exhibit 11A. What are we looking at in 11A? This is the overall picture of the master bedroom. that we see a suitcase. Is that the same suitcase we saw in the garage? No, it is not. Is the suitcase in 11A uh, the same size as the suitcase from the garage in 4D? No, it is not. Is it larger, smaller? It is larger. Thank you. Show you states 11B. What are we looking at in states 11B? This is a photograph of the south closet in the master bedroom, which I could see had female clothing and shoes, so I would determine that this was Teresa's closet. Did the closet appear to be ransacked in any fashion? It did not. I'm going to show you what states exhibit 11C. What are we looking at in 11C? This is the north closet in the master bedroom. Again, it had male clothing and items, so I would say that this belonged to Mr. Sievers. Did you, are there any items, were there any safes, safes in this closet? There were four safes in this closet. And if you could, with your laser pointer, point out where those four safes were in the closet. From the doorway, there was three on the right side of the closet and a very tall one on the left side of the closet. And were they locked when you were uh, there? Yes, they were. Did you eventually, were you able to eventually gain access into those safes? Yes, I was. And did you find any money in those safes? Yes, I did. And how much money did you find in those safes? Altogether, from all the different safes, there was roughly $50,000. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification states exhibit number 21. This is a photograph I took um, of one of the corners in the in the guest bedroom. I move to introduce states to the 21. Okay. Show it admitted. Permission to publish. You may. And again, you indicate this is one of the bedrooms. Yes, this is what I would call the guest bedroom. Uh, it had a bathroom directly across from it, so I called it the guest suite. But yes, this is I would call it a guest bedroom. Now, did you create a diagram? You talked about when you do your documentation of doing sketches. Did you create a diagram of the residence of Teresa Sievers? Yes, I did.
want to show you. Oh, I am. That's why I'm oh. standing here. <laughs> and mark for identification purposes. It's State's Exhibit Number 2. What is State's Exhibit Number 2? A very blown up portion of my crime scene diagram. And is this the crime scene, a blow up, but the crime scene diagram that you put, that you, uh, put together from uh, your assessment and documentation of the crime scene on Jarvis Road? Yes. Move to introduce State's Exhibit Number Two. We'll show it admitted. That might be hard to do. <laughs> Counsel for the defense who's handling this, if you need to move, by all means, you can get up and move to get a better view if they're pointing or describing something on it. Yes, ma'am. Judge, if we could just relocate our you can, you, you can move to get a better view. You can bring your client with you if you'd like. You can step down, ma'am. I forgot to say that, didn't I? Okay. Slide over. Stand in front of me. Doesn't matter. I'm a pirate. And could you walk the jury through that diagram from entry in the door to when the crime scene was discovered? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what is the Separated by the bathroom. 
And in the corner of the family room, there's another doorway that acts as the, I call it the guest suite, because it's kind of separated from the rest of the residence. And you have a bedroom with a bathroom. Just bear with me for one moment. Yes, ma'am. and dryer in the laundry room. It also shows the pantry and then the entry into the kitchen. And photo 60. 60 is the alarm panel that was found inside the laundry room. so reflect. actually the whole kitchen, but I'm standing in that general location. 7D. 7D is the pantry that was found in the kitchen. I'm standing outside in the kitchen photographing into the pantry. Portion of the kitchen that was kind of shows the, the 
office doors into the master. So it's that portion of the kitchen. And again, if you could, when you write the number, put an arrow that indicates the direction at which we are looking. of the kitchen that you can actually see the living room behind it. too far far uh, forward and so she's moved it down a little bit always in the same direction eight C is a photograph of the boxes that are on the floor in the nook area overall photograph of the sitting room. You can see the desk and the sofa and a bookshelf. leading into the office from standing outside the office. And then 10C. 10C is a photograph of the center of the office. You can see all the desks and the computer chair in the center. So in 10C, we see a computer stand, a monitor standing up on a particular desk. Correct. Could you put label your label 10C where that actual monitor is? L-shaped desk that is actually below the window in the office. And if you would mark where that desk is that we see in 10B. E. And you 10G. What are we seeing in 10G and where was it in the office? This is a photograph of the five-gallon bucket that bucket, uh, jug, water jug, that had currency and coins inside. Now you talked a little bit ago about the drawer from which you took out, you pulled out to take a photo with, uh, that we see in 10i with the money. Where was that drawer in the office? in the office. Can I draw the drawer? Yes. It's on the right side of the 
that's the portion right when you walk in. 10K, the photograph of the currency, the U.S. money. Where was that in the office? The framed currency was above the closet. So I don't know how to make it above. It's but it was above the closet. I'm just going to put it in the closet. And then 10L, which was the shredder in the document. Where is that in the office? This was also found on the floor right when you walked in to the left. It was near actually the five gallon jug full of money. You can actually see the jug in the photograph. And 10P. Where did, was 10P? 10P is a close-up photograph of items that were found underneath. I keep calling it an L-shaped desk. You can see how it kind of makes an L. Uh, it was found underneath a section of that desk. And again, I'm going to draw an arrow for underneath. I'm handing you 11A. What is 11A? 11A is an overall photograph of the master bedroom. And if you would mark the master bedroom for us, please. And 10B. Ten, ten B. 11B. 11B, thank you. It is a photograph of one of the closets in the master, which had female clothing. So it would be Mrs. Seaver's. Can't. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if I could, you have what you labeled central bedroom and southwest bedroom. Okay. Thank you. That's why I couldn't read over here. Hold on, Did you actually do a documentation and an assessment of those two rooms? Absolutely. Yes. And did you determine that they were the rooms of two young girls? Yes, I did. And did you find anything of evidentiary value in those two in those two rooms? None of evidence about value. Items were collected, but they were not of value at that time. a great deal about your documentation and initial assessment. Um, as you walked through the house, looking at the rooms, did anything strike you as, um, did anything strike you? Yes. What struck you? Um, the door in the garage, of course, as well as the kitchen. There were some items that were unusual. Did the house did it appear in anywhere that you went through in your documentation or assessment to have been ransacked? No. 
Did anything appear to have been taken from the house? It didn't appear so. Did you, after you'd done your documentation and assessment, did you begin to collect evidence? Yes, I did. All right. Um, and did you bring that evidence with you to court today? I did.